This is going to be a video on rehab exercises for lateral epicondyalgia, also known as tennis elbow. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to Physio Tutors. Although the course of lateral epicondylalgia is favorable, with 89% of patients reporting improvement in pain after one year follow up, a randomized controlled trial by Peterson et al. in the year 2011 has shown superior outcomes regarding pain with daily progressive exercise compared to a wait and see approach at three months follow up. Currently, there is no common consensus as to which exercise modality is superior to another. Although isometric exercise generally seems to decrease pain and tendinopathy, Coombs et al. in the year 2016 have shown an increase in pain intensity after an acute bout of isometric exercise performed at an intensity above but not below the individual pain threshold. So while isometric exercise might still have a place in lateral epicondylalgia rehab, exercising above the pain threshold might be less effective in the elbow compared to other body regions. Another study by Peter Sen et al. in the year 2014 compared a concentric versus an eccentric daily home exercise program in patients with chronic LE. They found a faster decrease in pain and increase in strength in the eccentric exercise group from two months onwards. However, both groups improved significantly regarding pain and strength and the crude difference between the groups was not significant at 12 months follow-up. For this reason, the authors conclude that both modes of exercise may be used in order to simplify the execution of the exercise, but stressing the eccentric work phase will probably provide an advantage. The following exercises described by Keeners et al. in the year 2015 can be included into a rehab program for lateral epicondylalgia. We modified them in a way that the concentric portion of the exercise is included as well. Number one, wrist extensions. Have your patient sit with the forearm in pronation and supported on his thigh or any other surface. The elbow should be flexed to around 60 degrees. Then perform simple dumbbell curls in a controlled manner. If you want to isolate the eccentric part, you could simply help return the wrist to the top position with the uninvolved arm. Number two, wrist extension with a twist bar. With the elbow flexed to 90 degrees, the patient holds onto the bottom end of the twist bar in maximum wrist extension. With the uninvolved arm, the patient grabs the top of the twist bar with the palm facing away and maximally flexes the wrist while the involved wrist is held in extension. Then the patient brings his arms in front of the body with both elbows in extension and slowly lets the twist bar untwist by allowing the involved wrist to move into eccentric wrist extension. If you want to isolate the eccentric part of the exercise, move into the starting position and start over. If you want to include the concentric part of the exercise, have your patient keep the twist bar in front of his body. Then have him move the affected wrist into full flexion for the concentric portion. Afterwards, the wrist is slowly allowed to move into extension again under eccentric contraction. A nice bonus of this exercise is that the uninvolved side is trained concentrically or isometrically in a ladder modification as well. Number three, supination with an elastic band. Anchor an elastic band to a pole at elbow height. With a flexed elbow to 90 degrees, the patient holds onto the elastic band in maximal pronation and steps away from the anchor so that the band is under tension. Then the patient is asked to perform controlled supination for the concentric part and resists rotation of the forearm into pronation again for the eccentric part. If 
you want to isolate the eccentric part only, start in full supination with little tension on the bend and increase the tension by sidestepping away from the pole. Then rotate 180 degrees into the palms down position to allow eccentric supination. Afterwards, step back toward the anchor and return to the starting position. Number four, supination with a hammer or a dumbbell. With the elbow flexed to 60 degrees, the patient grabs the distal end of a hammer handle with a neutral grip so that the weighted side is on top. Then the forearm is slowly rotated through 90 degrees toward a palm down position to allow eccentric supination. If you want to isolate the eccentric portion of the exercise, return the hammer to the starting position with the uninvolved arm. To include the concentric portion, try to supinate the forearm so that the hammer is returned to the starting position. The authors recommend to include one exercise for wrist extension and one exercise for wrist supination per session with two sets of 10 repetitions. Each repetition should be performed in a slow controlled manner and sessions should be performed three times a week with a 24 to 48 hour rest period in between to allow for proper recovery and a positive net synthesis of collagen. Similar to tendinopathies in other body regions, a good load management is key to rehabilitation. This means that the patient should temporarily avoid and reduce activities that aggravate the elbow pain. At the same time, the exercise program must be as close as possible to the tendon's current capacity and progress in the course of rehab in order to drive adaption. For this reason, we advise to start with a training volume that the patient can just tolerate in a pain-free manner and closely observe the patient's 24-hour reaction to exercise. If there is no pain aggravation beyond the 24-hour mark after the exercise, the training volume can be increased gradually by adding repetitions sets or intensity in the form of increased resistance. All right, first of all, thanks a lot for watching. If you are not sure about how to assess tennis elbow in the first place, click on the playlist right next to me to learn more about assessment. As always, feel free to like this video or drop us a comment down below if you have any questions and make sure that you are subscribed to our channel before you leave. This was Kai for PhysioTutors. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.